Hey folks, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to go over some worked examples covering the frequency and the period of a wave. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned there to this video. So let's get started. Firstly, we're going to look at three worked examples covering the relationship between frequency, number of waves, and time. Question 1 says that a boy counts 24 water waves hitting the entrance to a harbour in 4 minutes. Calculate the frequency of the waves. So we need to write down what we know from the question. So we're trying to find the frequency. We know the number of waves is 24 with no units and the time is 4 minutes. But remember we don't use minutes in physics calculations, we need to convert to seconds. So if we do 4 times 60 in your calculator, you should get 240 seconds. Writing down the equation relating these variables then we get f equals n over t. And substituting in the numbers now, we have that this is equal to 24 divided by 240. And putting that into your calculator we get 0.1 Hz. Question 2 says a loudspeaker vibrates at a frequency of 256 Hz to produce a note called middle C. How many sound waves does it produce in 3 seconds? Well again we need to write down what we know from the question, so we're asked to find the number of waves in this question, so n equals question mark. Our frequency is equal to 256 Hz, and our time is equal to 3 seconds. There's no prefixes used there, so we don't need to do any conversions. Firstly, writing down our equation relating these variables, f equals n over t. So if we rearrange for n, we can multiply by t on both sides to get rid of that t from the denominator, and that gives us n equals f times t. Substituting in our numbers now, we get 256 times 3, and putting that into your calculator, we get an answer of 768. You could put waves after that if you wanted to, but remember n has no units. And lastly, question 3, a swimmer at a pool calculates the frequency of waves in the water to be 3 hertz. How long did it take for 27 waves to pass him? So we're asked for a time in this question, t equals question mark. The number of waves is 27, and the frequency is 3 hertz. So again, there's no prefixes used here, so we don't need to do any converting. And writing down our equation, we have f equals n over t. This time we need to rearrange for the time t. So if I multiply by t on both sides, then I'm going to get f times t over here and n over this side. And then to end up with t on this side, I just need to divide by the f again. So I'm left with t equals n divided by f. And then substituting in the numbers, we get 27 divided by 3, and this gives an answer of 9 seconds. Moving on, we're going to cover three examples covering the relationship between the frequency and the period of a wave. Question 1 says that two waves are produced in 5 seconds, and we're given this picture here. So we've got a length horizontally here of 22 meters, and a vertical distance for the full wave of 3 meters. And part A says to find the wavelength first of all. So remember that the wavelength is the horizontal distance for one full wave. So you'll see I've got one full wave here and then I've got another full wave here because we go all the way up, all the way down and back to the start and all the way up, all the way down and back to the start. So that's my two full waves there. So that means I've got two wavelengths in 22 meters. So that means to get my wavelength, I need to divide my 22 by the two and that gives me 11 meters. And remember this Greek letter lambda is the symbol for wavelength. And part B says to find the amplitude. Well remember the amplitude of a wave is given by half the vertical height. So here my full vertical height is 3, so half the vertical height from here to here, or from here to here for example, is going to be 3 divided by 2, which gives me 1.5 meters. For part C we're asked to find the frequency, so writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the frequency, we know that the number of waves is 2, and the time is 5 seconds. So writing down our equation relating frequency, number of waves and time, we have f equals n over t, substituting in the numbers gives us 2 divided by 5, and putting that into your calculator, we get 0.4 hertz. And lastly, part D says to find the period of the waves, so to do that we need to write down what we know, so we're trying to find capital T, the period, and we now know that the frequency from part C here is 0.4 hertz. So writing down the relationship between T and F, we have T equals 1 divided by F, and substituting in the numbers gives us 1 divided by 0.4, again putting that into your calculator gives an answer of 2.5 seconds. Question 2 now is very similar to question 1, but just with a different scenario. So we've got 125 waves pass a point in 20 seconds. And you'll see we've got horizontal distance between this point and this point of 0.4 meters. And we've got a full vertical height of 0.5 meters. So part A says to find the wavelength of the waves. So hopefully we can see that we have one trough to one trough there, that's one wavelength. And from one trough to one trough there, that's another wavelength. So again, we have two wavelengths fitting into this horizontal distance of 0.4 meters. So that means to find my wavelength, I need to divide this distance by 2. So we have that lambda is equal to 0.4 divided by 2, which gives 
gives us an answer of 0.2 meters. And again, to find the amplitude, we have a full height of 0.5 meters, but the amplitude is half the vertical height from here to here or here to here, for example. So we need to divide 0.5 by 2. So our amplitude is 0.5 divided by 2, which gives an answer of 0.25 meters. Part C, the frequency of the wave. Writing down what we know, we have F equals question mark, N equals 125, and our time was 20 seconds. Writing down our relationship between F, N and T, we have F equals N over T, and substituting in the numbers, that gives 125 divided by 20, which equals 6.25 Hz. And lastly, part D, the period of the wave, we have that T equals question mark, and F is now 6.25 Hz from part C, so writing down our relationship between the period and the frequency of the wave, we have t equals 1 over f, and substituting in our numbers, we have 1 divided by 6.25, which when you put into your calculator, it gives an answer of 0.16 seconds. The last question, question 3, says that 50 waves pass a point in 10 seconds. Find the a frequency of the wave and b the period of the wave, just like we've done before, so this will give us practice over two equations. So for part a, the frequency of the wave, writing down what we know, f equals question mark, n equals 50, and the time is 10 seconds. So writing down our relationship f equals n over t, we have substituting in the numbers 50 divided by 10, which gives an answer of 5 hertz. And part B, the period of the wave, where we're trying to find the period, and we now know that the frequency from part A is 5 hertz. And writing down a relationship between the period and frequency of the wave, we have t equals 1 over f. Putting in the numbers, that gives us 1 over 5, which is equal to 0 0.2 seconds. That's it for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.